So far, so good. You've made it to part three. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And this is part three of the completely free Archicad course. Today, we're gonna to be looking at 2D massing and planning for your design, as well as starting to introduce some complex 3D profiles and compositions via the slab tool. Continue where we left off. We're gonna come back to our site plan up the top and realize that we've modeled everything so far. What we're gonna do is plan out our house, plan out our spaces using some 2D documentation tools and then move on to some more complex 3D elements. So instead of sticking to the site plan, we don't really need to know all this extra information. We can come across to our ground floor presentation plan, double click and press command or control L to open up our layers. Now, as you can see, plan sketch still showcases our actual survey contour information below, which I don't want it to. So I'm gonna type in site, go to site contact, unselect that eye and then go update. Pressing OK, I'm going to see all of that information disappear and notice that this is all on the wrong plan as well. So I'm going to highlight all of this information, move that back to site context layer so it all slowly disappears. Come back to my site plan, grab my boundary lines and move them off the site context to the text and general layer so that when I come back to my ground floor presentation, I still understand where our boundary lines are. If you wanted to skip that step, you could right click on site plan, go show as trace reference, and then you'd see the highlighted trace reference below of your actual site plan. Now you can change the colors of the trace reference here. So if you wanted it to be a very different color to what is this brown underneath, you can also change the opacity of the layer below as well if it's a little bit of a too much of a contrast for you. Moving on, we're gonna to come to our fill tool and just use our general fill to put some spaces and some shapes together. So starting off, we need to actually come into our site. So we need a driveway. We're gonna start from our road, come up all the way to here, understanding that the local codes push it back approximately six meters. We want it six meters, coming back down and pressing enter to finish off our square. You see, it is a very black, dark square, but that's because up top, our settings are appropriate for what this is. We want to make it something different. So we're going to change it from cut fill to drafting fill, first of all, which then allows us to edit these colors quite easily. Secondly, the foreground and textures are all set up by default in ArcCAD. Personally, I want to see everything below. I want to see it underneath. So I'm just going to change that to 25% for now and leave it at gray with no fill underneath. So this allows it to be transparent and this allows the window behind to be seen. If I wanted to have a color underneath, for example, an orange, I'd simply click there and the base of that would be orange. Command or Control Z undoes that completely. Now this fill may or may not be in the right position for you. So let's select this fill and to move it, we have one of two options. We can either select one of the hotspots and this floating toolbar will appear. We can select our drag tool here, which allows us to move it freely. Or if we press escape, select it once more we can press Command or Control D and then press anywhere on that shape to move it as we see fit. For me personally, I'm gonna select it, press Command D, select one of these nodes, hold Shift, come all the way to my boundary. Whilst holding Shift, press the D button for distance, then type in 1500 and press the minus button. By doing so, it will automatically calculate the 1500 millimeters distance from the boundary and I can press Enter and it will move it across for me. Now, this is just space planning. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm happy with the fact that it doesn't align with the curb exactly as it should. Next, we wanna hold our option or our Alt button and select our fill tool. We're simply gonna change the color so we have something different and come across the top here to change to our rectangular method. So pressing once, we'll start to create your rectangle tool. I'm gonna to press the tab button, type in 6000, tab, 6,000 and press enter. That creates my 6,000 by 6,000 garage space or carport. If my memory isn't too good and I wanna make sure I annotate things as I go along, I can simply come across to my text tool, click once, click twice, turn caps lock on for me personally, type the word garage in, change the color, change the size, change the formatting, and drag and drop that approximately in the middle. Now I choose to do this with just generic 2D fill lines at the start. 
because it's very easy to delete, change, and manipulate. If you're a little bit more advanced and know what you're doing, you can probably also come across and use the zone tool. So the zone tool up here is very similar to our 2D fill. So if I come across here, draw my square, press enter, you'll see it creates a zone name, it gives you the area, it automatically compiles everything within. And if you open up the settings by pressing Command T, you could change that to garage, change the zone number to 00, or whatever your future schedules are, press OK, and you'll see it automatically changes the garage and gives you an area. Now, this is more of an advanced technique, so we won't go into too much of that right now. We'll stick to this information here. This isn't going to be specifically a design tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into too many shapes, objects, rooms. It's not gonna have any principles behind it. It's simply just going to be quick massing sizes to create an architectural form and shape so you can understand the basic principles of ArcCAD. So once again, let's press the option button, change our color to something else. Let's create a large foyer entry. So let's go two and a half by two and a half, push this back maybe a meter, meter and a half. Once again, duplicate, change color so we can create some sort of bedroom spaces, living spaces. So let's create two of those in here by copying, duplicating across relatively quickly. We're going to create a large six by six playroom, games room, or anything of those sorts, and push that two meters back so that we can introduce our staircase to our second floor here. We're then going to select our foyer, press the command or control D button, select one of the hotspots, and then as you see it across, you'll see a tick next to the arrow. If you press the option or alt button, you'll see a plus come up which allows you to duplicate it once. If you press Option and Command together, you'll see two pluses come up, which will allow you basically to keep clicking as many times and create as many copies as you need. So let's delete those entirely. Select that foyer once more, Command D, Option once. Let's create one bathroom here. Let's duplicate it once more, extend it by a meter to create some sort of laundry potentially over here. Extend it even a little bit more so it aligns with that bedroom. Reduce this hallway space to 1500. Select this hotspot, go to our plus button, zoom in to the alternative corner so that we can simply drag across, automatically snap to the oranges hotspot, press OK on the mouse, and it will update that space there. Now in this design, there's a lot of wasted space. Like I said, it isn't a design tutorial whatsoever. It is very, very basic massing and shaping. So if we were to change this, this could be a games room, three bedrooms downstairs. We could have a bathroom here. And finally, we could have some form of laundry or wet area here. And then of course, our stairs will come into the design later on as we're actually duplicating and creating. So you'd walk in, you'd have a nice large glass window here, seeing directly to your backyard beautiful pool, manicured lawn, whatever you wanted in the rear landscaping. So there's a direct connection through indoor and outdoor, a very simple ground floor plate, a very small ground floor plate in that fact, and then most of the living upstairs. Now that we've moved on to the fact that it's going to be a two-story house, what we're gonna do is press Command or Control 7, and you'll see we have some of our story settings. So first, we wanna rename some of these. We're gonna go ground floor, Let's go 2745 because that is a typical timber frame plus plate. Next, we're gonna go ground ceiling. We're only going to allow approximately 300 for this space in between those floors. Then we're gonna go first floor. We're once again going to allow 2745. We're gonna introduce a new one above, go first ceiling. That we're gonna do as 300 once again. One more roof plan and that'll be 600 approximately depending on the parapet depending on the heights the last thing we want to do is come back to our ground floor insert below and go footings potentially those footings depending on what they're going to be are concrete so 172 is fine for the time being we'll leave all of these ticked and i'll explain what they do in an elevation tutorial later down the track so now let's press ok and you'll see all of these change rapidly. So all of these have automatically changed except these first two because they were already renamed. So let's go back, rename them to ground floor, ground ceiling, pressing OK. So now we have all of the same information we had previously. If I press the command button and the up arrow twice, 
you'll see in this section here, our levels change. So command down goes to ground floor, command up once, ground ceiling, command up once more, first floor. So then I can hold my option button and even replicate items on the trace layer. So now I'm replicating that bedroom space. I know that my stairs are gonna come up here. So what I'm gonna simply do is plan out my spaces. Overall, it's going to be a U-shaped design, something similar to this on the upstairs. And then we'll probably have a small balcony here and we'll have our major balcony on this side. So if we have one small balcony there, one major balcony over here, we can select these two fields, change their color to green or whatever color you so choose. It doesn't really matter. Make that three meters. And then we have our kitchen, living, dining spaces up the top, which is quite large, quite generous. We can arrange this upper living as we see fit later down the track. Increase that so that sits completely over the garage and you don't have to introduce a strange little roof below. And then there is a connection between our balconies and away we go. If we wanted to drag this back, increase this to have additional living space in this corner, potentially some sort of seating, reading, nook, whatever we wanted, however we saw this space working later on, we absolutely could. So now we have our overall floor plan kind of planned out and we'll continue to tweak that as we move along. Command down, down, we're gonna introduce our slabs. So this is where we're gonna get into a bit more complicated and advanced techniques, but it is important that we get this right. So let's go to our slab tool, press command T and open up those settings straight away. You're gonna see the slab thickness is automatically grayed out and you can't do anything about that because it's defined by the compositions. Now the compositions are quite self-explanatory. You could have a 100 millimeter concrete structural slab with tile finish on top. This basically indicates to me it's 100 mil of concrete plus 20 millimeters of tile and screed to create the 120 millimeter slab and so forth. This would be a slab on ground and that option isn't available to us at all. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna to have to create a brand new composition. If we exit out of that, exit once more, go to our document, go to our window tool, go to our toolbars and select attributes. You're gonna see this attributes palette update. What I'm gonna do is simply drag drop and let that place into my toolbar so it's always there. And then what we're gonna do is come to our composition icon here. Selecting our composition icon, we're gonna scroll down until we see those generic slabs which are identified by the categories themselves. We could arrange it simply here as well so they automatically appear at the top because we're looking for slabs. And then what we're gonna do is duplicate this. So under new, we're gonna select a little arrow, go to new composite. We're going to duplicate this floor itself. Now you can continue the naming method and go FS09, 100 millimeter concrete structural slab. And it's literally just going to be concrete in this case. There's not gonna be anything on top. So I'm gonna delete the extra, press okay. And then we're gonna edit our skins. In the skin section, you can see that we have tiles on top. We have an extra 10 mil of concrete and we have our reinforced concrete. We don't need the tile, we don't need the concrete. We just need the reinforced concrete at 100 millimeters thick. So now we press OK. We go back to our slab tool. We open up the settings by going Command T. And you'll see that FS09 100 millimeter concrete slab is there, which means we can now press OK and create a slab over the top of this existing garage. Two ways to do it. We can either use the polygon or the rectangle tool. Simply click, drag, click, or we can hold the magic wand tool hover over our 2D shape and click on the mouse button to create it. If we come into 3D, you'll see that slab has been created on that natural ground level where we set and define. So by pressing Command T, it is perfectly on that reference level. It's going to continue to create this sort of error effect wherever there's an overlap of materials. So if we go to our side existing, turn off our mesh propose, press OK, you'll see that it's floating and it is clean. So if we come back in, turn our propose mesh on, it'll continue to make this error, but it's not important for the time being. Coming back to our ground floor plan and going back into our slab tool once again, Command T, let's say we actually wanna use a tile finish or a timber floor finish throughout our entire house. So we're gonna select a different slab composite. We're gonna simply press OK. We're gonna use our polygonal tool and 
click around our objects. Now that we've made a full shape across, we can come back into 3D, lift that slab 50 millimeters so we can see it for the purpose of this. And you'll see that our slab is basically created. We have a 3D composition of our slab very quickly, very easily. Now what you see is this slab we actually created with a timber floor, but it's not showing nor any of the actual layers of the slab. So it's a little bit confusing. And this is where Archicad gets a little bit annoying and a little bit challenging because not everything is set up perfectly from the get-go. What you want to do is come down here to the core only section and change from core only to entire model. Now, when we zoom in to this actual structural slab, you'll see the structure, the core and the finishes. You'll see everything all at once. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, the playlist to the side of me showcases the rest of this series. The subscribe button's just down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well to be notified. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns, drop them in the comments down below. Like I said, that's all for me. So I'll see you next Monday.